Hey y'all, and welcome to a new version of War Thunder here, 1.29. As you can see, there's a few little uh, graphical changes here, and especially in the fact that the branches now offer a times 2 experience per day, very similar to how World of Tanks does it. Also, they've redone some of the trees. As you can see here, some of them are a little bit more broken out, not as much uh, on top of each other, a little bit more refined and defined both in the same circumstance and the most noticeable is the US here where they have the one fighter bomber here the true bombers here and the fighters over here and in here so you know you can see little bits of different things here you can also select types of battles up top as to what you want to compete into and of course for two battle you can open it up and right here you can select which of the battle types you want to go into right from the screen it'll show you exactly what is available and of course you can choose anything and if, there are options for choosing your missions as well that have not been enabled yet so that is c still coming in as for anything else you can still select your server right here and it also gives you a nice little player queue here so you can see how many players are playing how many battles are going how many are waiting for battle and the average wait time so you can swap between them to see what's available and go to them still no matchmaking reduction or any sort of matchmaking dependencies enabled yet you still get filtered in with the rest and you just hope for the best a new addition to modifications in addition to installing new engines and polished airframes is the allowance of including a backup plane in addition to the talisman the backup plane basically allows you to fly that same plane twice in an arcade mode so say you have a really powerful plane and it just unluckily crashes or gets shot down right out the bat well if you had purchased this option you're allowed to fly that plane again so that, that way you basically get two of the same plane for the cost of only 80 of the gold coins and of course that changes per plane so some might be 20 some are 80 some are more depending on their tier level so this allows you to get that second chance if you screwed up or just bad luck happened to go your way allowing you to take a little bit more action have a little more fun with that plane that you really enjoy and would have hated to have crash right off the bat one of the major inclusions into the new patch here is the different types of ammunition you can put in planes. Ranging from your Omnipurpose, which is a mix of everything from Tracer to Armor Piercing to HE, to Armor Piercing Incendiary Tracers and High Explosive Incendiary Tracers, to some things that are just single source like this one, which is the Armor Piercing Incendiary Tracers, and those like this one, which are just Armor Piercing all the way through, and then an or High Explosive round at the very end. In addition to the machine guns featuring these, also cannons feature that as well. Whereas you can have the same types of shells in there, as well as certain arm shells just for specific purpose targets. Now, general rule of thumb is that armor piercing will be good against the stuff on the ground as well as going through the armor and doing internal damage to air vehicles and their components. Whereas the high explosive ammunition will do damage to the exterior components and potentially, if they're incendiary, light things on fire. So if you have a armor-piercing incendiary and it goes through the engine block or the fuel tank and doesn't light it on fire from that alone, the high explosive will have a good chance of lighting that on fire. In addition, any of the high explosive probably have a much better chance of knocking out crew members, whereas armor-piercing, there's a good chance that it won't be... you'd have to be more accurate to knock them out. So, it gives you different options that either can allot for different types of circumstances or can make for interesting little shots if you use the omnipurpose and you hit with random assortments of different types in a row. So the combinations are warranting some good exploration, but really if you were to pick any of these, you can't go wrong. They all can be very good. One major feature worth noting when you're going into historical battles is you actually have to select your plane in advance of clicking to battle to determine which plane you're going to use because as you see here it selects right here what plane you're going to play and of course it tells you what are the available options and it allows you to choose which plane that way but when you enter to battle you can see right here a waiting session which tells you what all is available and what planes you're most likely going to go up against as you can see there's a ton in the zero to ones and a bunch down in the two to three four to five range so there's a good chance you'll get placed somewhere in here you can see exactly where people are playing and what planes to bring so that way if you see that you're one of the only few playing up here you could drop down and play one of the lower tier ones and you might get lucky enough to just enter it with them so we'll go ahead and see if we can enter one of these battles and we'll see what the new ammunition can do 
As you can see here, just to confirm, the plane that you selected initially when you entered the historical battle is the only plane you can choose from. I can no longer select any other plane but the one that I started with. And as you can see, here's the ammunition I had selected previously. So, we'll go ahead and enter the battle with those and see what type of effect they have on the enemy. A nice little addition to the game, which has no actual use in the game, but it's just kind of fun, is the addition of acrobatic smoke. So, if you assign it properly, you can set up acrobatic smoke to come off the tips of your wings. So, while it doesn't have any true effect in the game, you can add a little bit of smoke, as you can see there below my plane, just for fun and for looks. So, maybe there'll be an actual use for it later, otherwise it's just kind of for fun and, you know, just to look cool in battle. As I'm quickly approaching this bomber and ready to line up my shots, we can see that I'm... Well, we can't actually see it, but I am loading up with all the ammunition that I had purchased. So we'll see just how good it is as I come up right on top of this guy and see what type of damage we can do to him. I'm going to overtake him probably. A little too fast there. But I can easily outturn him as I do have a uh, combat flaps out. And he's just a bomber and I'm a fighter. So we'll turn back into him. See if we can't get him on the second pass. As soon as I can find him. There he is. So we'll bring my flaps up. Gain some speed on him. Get up into my range that I can shoot him at. Pull my flaps back out. And uh, lay into him again. Alright, so we're closing in on him here. So we'll go ahead and uh, lay into him. And you can already see the uh, difference in how the cannons are working. I knocked out his gunner. I'll need to take another pass at him. Because I didn't obviously kill him. I thought for sure I would have. So, we'll make another pass at him. Come around at full speed. Raise my flaps again to gain speed on him. He's going to fly low as he can to try and avoid me or get close to the AA. But I think I'll probably get him before he actually has the opportunity to get to his AA cover. So, going to gain on him. And he actually crashes to the ground. So I'm racing through some AA here to try and get to this BF-109. But I'm, of course, going to have to fight through the flak and have to deal with him. He is probably a much better turner than I am, but we can at least give it a shot and see what happens. And I might run out of ammunition if I don't play that one a little bit more cautiously. So i got to be very careful when I go after these people if I don't have a shot lined up very well. And I'm right at a good angle. Because I need to make sure that I can actually hit them. And I need to be within about, I'd say, 12,000 feet to hit them. Of course, the trick of the matter is to then actually hit them. Let's see if I can't get within that amount of distance and be able to actually hit. Because I think I might be sitting here flying all day long against him unless someone decides to come and help. I do have the airspeed on him. I do have the ability to turn faster than he. I just need to be able to get at a decent angle that I know I can hit because I can't sit here wasting shells too, too much. Because I do not have the ammunition to do so. So I will just continually chase him till I know that I'm on a good spot to hit him. Right about... Nope. I believe he may just so happen to have me on this one. Come on and I'll turn. I am out flying. It's just the problem of being able to outshoot. Massive hit by AA there. Taking little bits of hits on him whenever I can. Of course, I will run out of machine gun and cannon almost simultaneously, so waiting until the last second is about all I can do. I can't necessarily go after him without, you know, guaranteeing a hit because I will run out of ammunition real quick. So I'm going to have to try and dodge all this incoming fire to chase down this guy. Oof, dodge cannon flak all the time. Alright, so almost behind him again. If I can get another good hit on him, I'll be set. But the problem, of course, is getting that good hit on him. So there we go, I was able to hit him. Just not enough to uh, damage anything. Again, hitting him for no damage. So the ammunition, while it's uh, 
nice. It isn't necessarily a guarantee to do more damage. Of course, I'm using, again, I'm using Omni, so the type of ammunition and damage I'm going to do is un completely unknown. More damage to them. I really need to look into what each type of ammunition does, but it's the first available. You gotta unlock them in order, just like any type of other thing. You gotta end up running out of, uh, you have to upgrade it just like you would upgrade any of your other stats to acquire bombs, so on and so forth. It's not a guarantee as to you'll get them right off the bat. Sometimes you'll pl your planes will have enough experience that they will be upgraded, other times they might not be. So, it's just a little bit of work is in order to get a hold of the stuff that you want. Let's see if I can't take this guy out here. Another massive hit for no damn or for uh, no critical hit. This guy needs to die here quickly before I end up running out of ammunition. Let's see if I can't get back on him. So I did end up killing him just because he ended up crashing himself. So not a bad little thing. I'm almost out of ammunition though. Let's see if I can't find the last guy here. I have no idea where he's at. There. So. There you have it. So, the ammunition, the Omni, it didn't seem like it did much better. It might have more effect in the arcade mode. We'll have to try that next and see if that makes a big difference. Because in historical, you're going to do about the same regardless of the ammunition type from what I can tell. But then again, maybe it was just the way I was hitting and the places I was aiming. As with the historical battles, the arcade battles have a very big bracket here to show you who's all waiting on queue and the average wait times associated with them. You can also see the distribution of the players that were sitting there waiting to enter the battle. So we'll go ahead and enter here and see if the ammunition does make a difference. Something new to arcade is that you can no longer dive bomb. As you see here, my ability to bomb goes out whenever I'm flying downwards. You actually have to keep a normal trajectory if your bombs are going to come out of a bomb bay door. Now, if you were to be using a bomber with wings or bombs on the wings you can not actually bomb in a dive bomb otherwise you're restricted to flying somewhat level when you are bombing to keep it a little more realistic while in arcade as I proceed to flying through the hornet's nest here and chase down some planes we see that the the power of these guns is actually fantastic as I need to avoid hitting this guy but otherwise overall it will do some pretty gnarly damage to that one dude. So we'll go ahead and turn on our flaps, circle back around, get a better shot at him. Come back at him real quick here. Be able to chase him down and see what type of damage that the guns on this thing can do once I get close enough to him. So he's 3,000 away. Gotta wait till we're a little bit closer there because of course Arcade's a little bit different operation. He's flying too far away so we're gonna go ahead and target something that's a little closer here. Go after the uh, the BB-1 here. It might be. I don't know. You gotta. Yeah. So we'll go after the BB-1. So as you can see, just doing the crazy amounts of damage that this thing's capable of. Now, of course, my engine and everything else is out, but not too bad. Have to uh, see if we can't land this thing a little quickly here. Oh, now I'm in trouble. So we'll try that with a different plane. While it might be overkill to use a bow fighter here, the ability with its cannons are certainly something to be uh, just completely cautious of because it can be one nasty little plane when fighting against other ones in this tier especially. So we're going to go after something that's big and heavy such as this PBY and see just how much damage I can do to it with the, the cannons on this thing. So as I climb up and try and race to catch that guy, We'll see exactly what I can do here. He is pretty far away, but I should be able to overtake him. I am a very fast plane. Of course, my engines are going to die out if I'm not careful. But, there we go. Now we can see him again. So we're going to go right after him, see if we can't take him down with a few shots from this cannon. And see just how quickly these this new ammunition works. I believe I'm using Omni here. Yeah, I'm using Omni Purpose. So we'll see just how good it is. As I climb up, try and get right on this guy little too far away from my liking so wait until I'm a little closer here there we go rudder is completely gone on that thing he should end up crashing almost immediately or at least he will not be able to continue to uh, fly stably nope he is crashing to the surface so the cannons on this thing fantastic let's see about getting another target here real quick 
We have a TFB here. We'll go after him just to see what type of stuff this thing can do. Of course, being uh, the big bad plane that I am, I should be able to kill him easily. Again, that's not necessarily the point of it. It's more just to see how the ammunition performs. So we're going to go right after this TFB, try and take him out. He missed his landing there to take over the point. So we're going to get on him real quick here. I prefer to be closer than a couple hundred feet, but we'll see. So right away, that heavy firepower just completely wrecks people, especially coming from such a devastating plane as the giant thing here, the bow fighter. It could really do some damage to people. So we're going to have to go after some more people here, but as you can see, the damage this thing does is pretty extreme really something to be feared when you upgrade the ammunition of course that's just the ammunition that I have selected there's several other types that you can upgrade to over time but this is all that I had available to at the bow fighter right off the bat so we're gonna close in some more targets here see what else I can damage and destroy going after some of these guys we'll see who comes up first really more of a target of opportunity more than anything else try and go after what's looking like the HE just because of his distance to me. So we will come up on him real quick here. It's 5,000. He's actually crashing. So we're going to go up to the B5N. I don't know. It looks like that uh, 51 is still alive. So nope. We'll go up to the F2A real quick. He should be a quick, easy target. Take him out and then we'll move on from there. was close awesome so so far so well all that's left is this SU2 over here way in the distance we'll see if we can't catch to him closing that gap 10,000 is a pretty far distance to go so let's see if we can close real quick and finish him off as well come on buddy you can make it but again the upgrades to this plane or upgrades to the ammunition really do make a pretty nice difference on top of everything else that's has been added to this game so overall I'm really enjoying this patch really has added quite a bit to the game we'll go up to this SB2M here since he's close so we just need to close the distance on him but as we've seen lots of good stuff implemented from additions into just the way that planes operate to a few different other things so the game's gonna end before I can actually get close enough to do anything to him but as you saw really could lay into people, do some heavy damage there with those upgraded weaponry. So, thanks for tuning into this little look at the new patch here applied to War Thunder 1.29, and I hope you all are enjoying it. See you in-game. And one last thing before I go, as you can see here, the double experience is applied to your final total, so a fantastic little bonus there at the very end. Thanks for uh, putting out such a good game. I hope to see you all in it.